Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video we will be looking at uh, GlusterFS. So the idea is, a uh, few users asked me about um, how to use GlusterFS as the uh, storage solution in uh, Kubernetes cluster, um, using GlusterFS as the persistent storage provider. So I thought of doing a few videos around GlusterFS to um, understand the concepts and then we can dive into uh, using GlusterFS in your Kubernetes cluster. All right, so I'm gonna split this uh, series into different videos. The first video is about uh, going through the concepts and then the second video we will be looking at how to install uh, the GlusterFS components on your different nodes. And then the following video we will look at um, how to create volumes, how to mount volumes from the uh, client machines and so on. All right, so once we are familiar with GlusterFS, we can look at how we can implement this uh, in our Kubernetes cluster. All right, so I've got my notes here. So we're gonna look at GlusterFS. It's a network storage solution. And um, on the left, you can see here, we've got two machines, uh, which we will be doing in the next video, but uh, just for theory's sake, um, assume you've got two nodes, Gluster1 and Gluster2 and uh, we will be running uh, the GlusterFS server on these two nodes. So these two nodes uh, constitute the storage pool. So our storage pool will be consisting of two nodes, Gluster1 and Gluster2. And we will be, once we install the GlusterFS related packages, we will have uh, a process called the GlusterD running on these two nodes, okay? And the other terms that you need to be knowing are, uh, apart from Gluster D, uh, there is something called Brick. Brick is nothing but uh, uh, just a volume, just a directory that you create in your uh, storage nodes. So we've got these two storage nodes that forms a storage pool. So these two nodes knows about each other, All right? So Brick is just a directory that you share uh, to your clients. And then what you need to do is you will be creating a uh, something called a volume, which is just a logical entity. It's not a, a physical entity. It's just a logical uh, volume that you create out of your bricks, all right? And then we can use uh, the client machine and we can mount these volumes uh, from our client machine. Okay, so when we create the volume, there are different ways. Uh, basically, GlusterFS is a highly available solution. Uh, the idea is when you create a volume, um, even if one of these nodes goes down, your data will still be there, all right? So when we create a volume, uh, there are a few different ways that we can create a volume. So one is a replicated volume, which is suitable for high availability. For example, if I create a volume with two bricks, one brick on each of these storage nodes, and I mount this volume on my client machine, all right? So um, basically the client machine sees it as one volume and when it writes, when it mounts that volume locally on the client machine and when we write any data to that volume, we are just writing it to this volume, which is an abstraction layer, which is just a logical entity. We are writing data to this volume, but behind the scene, it actually writes the data to brick one on Gluster one and brick one on Gluster two. So that's a replicated volume. So all the data that you write will be stored in these two bricks. So depending on the number of nodes you've got in your storage pool, your replicated volume will write to the appropriate bricks. Um, so this is a highly available situation. So while you're writing your data from your client machine to the volume, and if one of the uh, node goes down, your volume is still retained, your data is still retained in your other brick, right? And when we bring this machine back up, it goes down for some reason, or if you want to take it down for some maintenance, and then if you bring it back up, uh, this brick one will sync the data from uh, the brick one on the other node. So that's the, uh, the idea of high, high availability. So that's one type of volume that you can create. And then we can create a distributed volume. For example, um, you create another volume, say for example, this volume, and you create this volume from the two bricks on these two nodes, say brick two on Gluster one and brick two on Gluster two. So when you set it up as a distributed volume, your files 
gets stored across these two bricks so it's not in a replicated fashion so if you just write a file if you just write a large file um, it will get stored some part of the file will get stored in uh, brick 2 on Gluster 1 and some part will be stored in Gluster 2 so this is for scaling out your underlying storage so this doesn't provide high availability if one of the node goes down the data that's stored on that particular brick is lost and uh, there is no high availability uh, but this replicated volume here provides you with high availability so if you take this one as an example for example this brick one is about a gig one gig and brick one here on the second node is one gig the replicated volume the total amount of data that you can store is just one gig because it's replicated each of these is one gig so the total amount of data that you can the total amount of space that's available to your client machine is just one gig but the data is replicated between these two bricks so in in, in the case of distributed if you've got uh, one gig of brick here and one gig one gig of brick here the combined storage because it's distributed it's not replicated uh, you get a combined storage of two gigs so you can use up to two gig of uh, the volume space so Stripe is something similar to distributed if you write a large file some part of it will get right uh, will get written to one brick and some part will get written to the other brick and it's not that you can just use replicated or distributed or striped but you can also uh, use a combination of these different types all right and when it comes to the uh, client machine uh, the way you mount or the way you access your volumes can be using the GlusterFS protocol or you can also access the volume using the NFS protocol uh, but I think uh, only NFS version 3 is supported I think uh, but I'm not sure but we will look at that in a future video so that's Gluster Client and in terms of uh, the machines that I will be using in my next video it will be all CentOS 7 machines so you can use a virtual machine for testing purpose or you can use a physical server if you've got access to uh, in my case I will be using Linux containers that's it and the package that I will be using is uh, called CentOS release Gluster so that package that repository that's it's, it's not a package you install it uh, it's going to set up a repository on your machine and then once that repository is installed or enabled then you would be able to install all the GlusterFS related packages so on the storage nodes here the Gluster server we will be installing a package called GlusterFS server and on the client machine we'll be installing a package called GlusterFS client so it's just a meta package and once you install that package it's going to pull all the other dependencies that it needs okay so that's the uh, the concept for that's the topic for our next video and um, I think that's it for this video I just want to keep it uh, short and in the next video we will see how to um, set up all these machines and how to deploy how to install all the components and uh, uh, create the uh, uh, the storage pool all right so thank you so much for your time watching and i will see you all in my next video bye bye